so much. So with the president saying he won't settle for piecemeal extensions and no sign that the two sides are any closer to a deal, what is next as America's economy is brought to the brink of a default in a matter of weeks? Let's bring in MSNBC political analyst Jonathan Alter and Christina Bellantoni of Roll Call. Jonathan, Republicans made these promises, these pledges of commitment to Grover Norquist that right. they would not raise taxes. But can I ask you, is a personal pledge now more important than the nation, <laughs> America, on the global stage, defaulting? Apparently to a, a significant number of House Republicans, it is. Uh, they signed this pledge, as Grover Norquist explained to me uh, a few weeks ago when he pushed the actual pledge across the table for me to look at it. it, it refers to net, no net tax increases. That's what they're signing uh, a pledge to, to almost a religious pledge to Absolutely. promise never. So in other words, if they cut out, say, the loophole for corporate jets, that doesn't pass Grover Norquist's test uh, because it's a net tax increase without a corresponding reduction in taxes somewhere else. So Norquist basically doesn't believe that you can use tax revenues as a way of drawing down the deficit. And he has an awful lot of Republicans who are worried about primary challenges, that's their big worry, uh, who agree with them. So what you have here, Martin, this is really interesting, I don't think very well understood. The Republican Party is making a choice. They are saying that deficit reduction, which they've claimed for months, is so important to them. They don't want to put it all on our kids' credit cards. Indeed. Remember those lines? Deficit reduction is not important to them because they don't want to get there. Because to get there, as even very conservative senators like Tom Coburn and Saxby Chambliss on the Republican side say, you must have some revenue increases. It can't be all spending cuts. The president has made what for Democrats is a very troubling proposal. They have a ratio of four to one spending cuts to revenue increases. Basically, you know, four trillion dollars in cuts for one trillion dollars in closing loopholes for rich people. They still can't that. They can't get serious yet about actually confirming claim to be interested in some. Christina, when we were watching uh, Speaker Boehner's press conference about an hour ago, he seemed sheepish, almost as if he's not really in control of his negotiating position. That's true, isn't it? Because the puppet master at the moment appears to be Eric Cantor and the Tea Party freshman group that's in the Congress. Well, I don't know that I would use the term puppet master, but one thing, you know, Roll Call had this scoop over the weekend that Eric Cantor and Vice President Biden have continued to talk even after Cantor walked away from that small group as they were working toward a deal on the debt. So there's definitely a lot of behind the scenes maneuvering here. And I think it's important just to respond to what Jonathan was saying is that some Senate Republicans have actually looked at um, some of the going against Norquist when you took away right. subsidies, you know, looked at ethanol. The House Republican caucus is much, much more conservative in that. And I think the other part of this goes to what your first question was, Martin, which not all of the House freshman Republicans believe that the United States would actually default. I think that many of them are telling their constituents back home that there's still more wiggle room, that more time can be bought, no matter what Treasury Secretary Geithner says, believe that this dire as it this is. This is so dangerous. There are ignorant people feeding lies to their constituents. Well, Let's call nation. it what it is. To the nation. Let's call it what it is. If they say some freshman member of Congress goes back, you know, who, who has just arrived in Washington, doesn't know anything, let's face it, about economics, and they say that they, they know more than the head of the International Monetary Fund, who was on the Sunday show saying this would bring a disaster, than the Treasury Secretary, than Democrats and Republicans who served in government, for them to be feeding this garbage to their constituents is, is just disgusting. This uh, makes the Democrats even more important in all of this, because normally you have the party that's in power votes to increase the debt ceiling and the party that's not in power can vote against it with that luxury when you have this split uh, power system. But the Democrats are going to have to join to make this happen because Boehner's going to lose a good number of his Republicans on this vote. So he's going to have to rely on Nancy Pelosi to get some votes of that, his own. That's absolutely true. But Jonathan, what more can the president give? I mean, as you said, it's a four to one ratio. The three uh, three, possibly four. Possibly four. Now or four to one. What else can he uh, do? I mean, this isn't a negotiation. 
This is holding a man hostage. Well, I, I think that you could argue that um, he's actually in a pretty good position right now um, and that when the country starts to respond, we'll find that even a lot of Tea Party folks believe that deficit reduction is more important than holding the line on any, any closing of tax loopholes or any revenue increases, even if it's on the super rich. If you talk to Tea Party folks as I have, them to make kind of a Hobson's choice, you know, I say, I'm going to... Rhetorically, I'm going to put a gun to your head right now. What's more important to you? Huge uh, deficit cuts, holding the line on any tax increase. And to a person, they say, huge deficit cuts. That's what we're about. We want to protect the future of our country. And you can say that the Tea Party folks are, you know, have merits on their side in making that argument. They are concerned about children, as a, as a lot of people are. So I think there's a, a a sort of a cognitive dissonance here between where the country really is, or particularly the Tea Party, and where the Washington Republicans are. And they are not representing their constituents accurately. They are uh, worried about primary challenges, and they are not looking to the larger interests of the country. It's very unfortunate. Jonathan Alter and Christina Bellantoni, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Next, the problem.